love and the fellowship, which we carry our respect, you know, and uh, she's come to share her experience with the folk with us tonight, and that'll be Lisa G. Narcotics Anonymous. Just wait one moment, okay? I mean, I wanted to stop and thank God for Narcotics Anonymous. Like, it, like when I just think about, and when I try to like think of the words to convey my gratitude for this fellowship, it actually minimizes how grateful I am. Like when I try to think of the words, the exact words, it minimizes how grateful I am for this program. So what I do is I show up. Even when I don't want to, I show up. You think I want to come here on a Saturday night and share my experience, strength, and hope? Like I don't even like to share. Donnell asked me about a month ago. I get asked to share more than I even actually say. I mean... And I don't say that on an, on an ego level, but I actually turn down a lot of shares more than I say yes. Only because I have to draw on a power greater than myself to help me share and dig deep. I'm talking about all the way deep where I got to expose myself because I don't like going back. I don't like having to draw on something bigger than myself so I could expose the truth right here, right now. Regardless of clean time. Listen, I got 18 years clean. Woo! Yeah. Woo! I got clean in the American River area. So there's this, I see a lot of familiar faces. I saw Art, I see Johnny, I see fucking Donnell. I mean, a lot of people here that have loved me. Aunt, they came to support me. Carl, Angie, his wife. I mean, my, got Kirk back there. Damn, Mike. Y'all like y'all see me grow up here in Narcotics Anonymous. I cried from this podium. I I, I mean I, I I laughed. I cried. I pled. I I begged you guys like how the fuck do I stay clean even when I don't want to? I'm talking about where using look more attractive than going to a meeting. Lots of times, you talk about the road gets narrow. So when people come here with 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 one day clean, there is something about being here with with one day clean. One day, like if you got one day clean, like I congratulate you, I celebrate you because if you use like I use, I couldn't get one day clean. I couldn't get one day clean. I live to use, I used to live like, I, I, it was impossible to get one day clean. So if you got a day clean, you're a miracle. But hey, check this out. That's why I love this, this program is because even the still using addict is welcome. With special encouragement to keep coming back. We welcome you. And a lot of times I didn't want to come back. I got clean and I got I got introduced to this program back in 1995, but I didn't get clean this last time until 2001. So there was a lot of flirting and going back and forth. Like I didn't think that I had a drug pro. Like I thought I had a drug problem. Like drugs were the problem. I thought I had this like drug problem. Like, listen, drugs are not the goddamn problem. I know people that use drugs and live just fine and, 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 and are, just, are, are social and are productive members of society. I just can't. In fact, my disease, it manifests, it manifests in other areas of my life. Shopping, sex, porn, relationships, men, women, all kinds of shit. I thought my whole life that it was just like I was it was just bad luck 
I was at the wrong place at the wrong time. I had the wrong look. I had to like, what was it about me that there was something gnawing inside of my stomach, inside of my gut? Like, why did I feel this, this brokenness? Like, where was it coming from? I didn't have a mama that said, you know what, honey, go on the inside for the solution. Like, do an inventory. I didn't have a mom who did that. And it's not that I love my mom less. Look, I love my mom. I love my family. I, but there was something about their love that they couldn't help me get clean. Like God knew the exact situation. God knew the exact circumstance for me to get clean. Because I couldn't get it on my mom's love. No matter how many times at my mom, they told me they loved me. I still couldn't get clean. No matter how many times my children look, my children, they would bang on the door. They'd be knocking on the door. They'd say, Mom, please open up the door. And I remember their little lips. I, 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 would, I would look underneath the door and I could see their little, little lips underneath the cracks of the door and their fucking fingers. And they, 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 they couldn't fucking, and I still couldn't put the pipe down. Like, I don't know if that's your story, but that's my story. So when I have to share and expose myself, I got to ask God to help me go back that far. And if you don't remember what it looks like, when, if you don't remember what your last day looks like, that might not be your last day. So I got to have that shit at the forefront of my mind. And sometimes I don't like to look at myself that way. Some guys just don't like to go back all the time. And when and I didn't come here and say, God, please give me Narcotics Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say freaking come. I didn't want this. What, what was Narcotics Anonymous? No, when I was feeling the pain and the worthlessness and all the and all the hopelessness. No, I prayed for a husband. I said, God, please help me. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened? Oh God! <laughs> God put a husband in my life. In fact, we got married. We had two kids. We had two beautiful kids. We I'm from the Bay, so we moved from San Francisco to Sacramento. Had the house, the dog, the the fucking dogs, and all kinds of shit. But two addicts that don't know they're addicts could be very toxic to one another. Like, I love this cat, like, for better, for worse, through thick, through ten, thin, till death do us part. Like, I love this, like, I loved him hard kind of love. <clears throat> and I would not leave this cat no matter what. I didn't give a fuck. Like, no matter what. And he would put hands on me, we put hands on each other, um, and I would have this mother-in-law that would say, "Honey, what, what did you what did you say? What exactly did you do?" When I would come to her with a black eye, a broken nose, and this is like, there, but there was just something that I could not leave this cat until one day, and I and <laughs> towards the end of my using, I was living in a car. Um, we, I was living in a car and um, I was, we were homeless. And at this time, um, Child Protective Services, this agency had taken my children. And thank God for this agency because my children were not safe with me. You understand? Um, and so April 3rd, 2001, um, <clears throat> April 3rd, 2001, my, um, I was calling every single day, and this agency kept telling me, at least a call, that you gotta call, you gotta call, and see if they got a bed. And listen, I'm not endorsing any agency, I just know that um, this was the vehicle to get me to get clean this last time. Because I know people who've come here from the streets to the seats and NA, and they're, they're, they're clean, okay? But this last time, I was calling this agency, and they were telling me, you know, to come, and um, so every day, back then we didn't have, I didn't have a cell phone back then. So I was on Auburn and Watt and I was at the pay phone with my three little quarters. And, and, um, and I put, and I, I called and this one day they said, uh, Lisa, you, you know, we got a bed for you. And I was like, whoa, they got a bed. Like this shit got real, real fast. <laughs> 
And I was like, oh my God, I can't get clean. Like tomorrow is my son's birthday. And they were like, we don't give a fuck if it's you. Listen, if I cuss, I'm sorry, I just use it for emphasis. No disrespect, all right? But they said, uh, Lisa, listen, we don't care if it's your son's birthday. Now, mind you, I didn't give a, I didn't give a shit about any other birthday. But all of a sudden, like this birthday was so fucking important, right? And um, and uh, so I said, okay, I'm gonna go. And uh, I said I'll be there. So I, I took my second cord and I called the dope man and. And nobody, and he didn't, he didn't call, he didn't pick up, but I, I left the message. I said, listen, I'm at, you know, um, Watt and Auburn, can you come pick me up? You know, I'm about to get clean. And he didn't freaking show. And, and um, my last quarter, um, I called my dad. And um, the last time I saw my dad, it was a rainy day. It was, it was, um, it was a rainy day. And um, I was in my car. It was around five o'clock in the afternoon. And, um, and uh, I was waiting for my mom and dad to come home. And I just knew, man, if I could just see my mom and get to my mom, she'd let me shower and she would give me 20 bucks and we, we would be good, right? So they pulled up and I saw them pull up in the driveway and I got out of my car and they pulled in and I stood there in the middle of the driveway ready to talk to my parents and they shut the garage door on me. And I was standing there in the rain, like, like what now? Like, like, where am I gonna go now? Like, what, where, what's gonna happen, you know? And, um, and so that was the last time I saw my parents, but this particular day on April 3rd, my dad picked up the phone and he, he drove me, he picked me up from Watt and, Watt and Auburn and he drove my raggedy ass to a detox facility um, off of Stockton Boulevard and so April 4, 2001 is my clean time. It's my clean day. I got here the day before I died. Like it was right on time. I didn't know that the greatest gift that I could ever give my child, my children, was the gift of recovery. I didn't even want recovery. I didn't know what good, quality, clean recovery was when I got here. When I got here, I sat here in these meetings. Y'all talked fucking weird. Y'all said shit like words like anonymity, uh, resentment. Like, who the fuck says resentment? Like, in the streets, we don't talk like that. Like, bitch, I got a resentment? No, bitch, I'm here. <laughs> right, Ann? Like, we don't talk like, bitch, I got a resentment. No, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> y'all talk words like anonymity, integrity, like y'all talk weird. It was uncomfortable to be clean. Like I looked around, I was like, oh, I don't even, I, who, I don't even hang out with these people. But I came here and I sat down and I, I sat in the front. I didn't know what sponsorship was. And y'all was planting little seeds in me. They said, get a sponsor, work the steps, get a home group, get a God, and, 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 and act as if. And I took this program long before I actually lived it. And I came in here and I didn't, my, my husband didn't get clean. And, 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 I, and, I was, and I was new to recovery and I had all these feelings. I couldn't identify the feelings. It was like, ow was the feeling. I never was alone. So I came into the, into the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous in this group, in these meetings. And I, and I came here searching for a date. <laughs> I sure did. They said, oh, Lisa, you need to, they, they, these old times were telling me, oh, Lisa, you, you, you need to uh, give yourself one year. And I was thinking to myself, three, I gotta wait 365 days to, to meet the man of my dreams, the woman of my dreams, and live happily, happily ever after. Like, and typically people who say stay out of relationships are people that are in relationships. <laughs> So when people come at, come at you with that shit, you ask them, is that because that's your experience? So when I came in here, I came in here, and if you were sleeved down with tattoos, if you had a couple felonies, if the whites of your shoes were white, then that's the one I wanted. Everybody knows who knows my story, knows about white shoes. Carl came, he said, look, I got my white shoes on. <laughs> 
And as quickly as I got in that relationship, it quickly ended because how could I give somebody love, understanding, tolerance, patience if I couldn't even give it to my damn self? I was so damn needy. I wanted you to call me at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 10 o'clock. And at 11 o'clock, if you didn't call, are you fucking around? Yeah. <laughs> and I was quite, you know, I go from one person to the next without skipping the beat. It's like that fast. It's like damn near shaking hands. It's like, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> like that quick, you know? But listen, check this out. I got molested at, look, I lost my virginity at the age of 12 years old. I was sent to Aiken, South Carolina at, at, at 13 years old. Um, at 14 years old, I freaking was sent to the Philippines. At 15 years old, I sat sex with my dad's brother. At 19 years old, I met my husband. At 21, I had my kid. At 23, I had my other child. At 24, I had an abortion. At 25, I had an abortion. At 26, I had an abortion. At 27, I had an abortion. At 28, I had an abortion. And at 29, I got clean. So you want me to take all of this and bring it into Narcotics Anonymous and now practice principles? <laughs> Just like that? You want me to be, take all of this brokenness and bring it into Narcotics Anonymous and I'm supposed to be principal. So when people are coming up here and they're not acting, acting all principal, have some compassion. Because we all get a turn up in here. That's right. Because people were like, oh, Lisa, when I was little on my little high horse, look, I would get my literature, I was pounding to the podium, talking about the period. You should not, you should all respect the period and, and don't be adding shit to the literature and, and, and back it up with your time because that's how newcomers get misinformed. You should leave these newcomers alone. Shit, until I got me a newcomer experience. <laughs> <laughs> But this is the, the greatest thing about sponsorship, is that my sponsor loved me where I was at. She said, you want to you want to get in a relationship? I want you to write down all kinds of, the, I want you to write down what, who you, what, you, what, what kind of person you want in your, in, in, in your life. And I said, okay, I wanted a person that was honest, open, you know, uh, um, fine. He had to have white shoes. <laughs> But look, I didn't even have white shoes, right? But anyway, so I have this whole list, right? And the next day she said, okay. I said, here you go, Spawn. So she said, all right. Well, now pulling from that list, what qualities do you have? I told you I didn't even have them white shoes. But I wanted this, like this, I had this idea of what this person could be. But my sponsor, she just said, keep coming back. I'm gonna love you exactly where you're at. Cause I wanted not Mr. Right, I wanted Mr. Right now. Like he had to be right fucking now. Cause I could not be by myself. I'm talking about being with somebody with, to the point where the pain is so deep that you go to sleep with the pain, you wake up with the pain. Like the pain follows you from every room in the house. Every song on the radio reminds you of him or her. I'm talking about that pain. I'm talking about at midnight when your sponsor don't pick up the phone. I'm talking about the pain that puts you in fetal position to the point where it's like, ow. And I found that in another human being. And she didn't take that away from me. She didn't rob me from my experience. You know what my sponsor said? She said, she told me, Lisa, do you believe in God? And I said, yes, Spawn. She said, okay. God does not put the wrong person in your life. God continues to put the right person in your life to reveal to you your brokenness that's already inside you anyway. Y'all missed that one, huh? I'm talking about being, it's like being with somebody, for, it's like being in the same relationship for years just with a different person. It's the same shit, different day, different dude. But, but what is it that God was revealing to me? Because I can get it twisted that God is revealing to me other people's defects of character. <laughs> but for real, for real, if you ain't write down our defects of character on a piece of paper right now, all of us, alphabetize it in order, pass it around, you could not tell who was who. So don't judge me for where I'm at, 
Don't judge the newcomer if they're out with this person, that person, or that person, or if the old timer who's sleeping with that person, or listen, I'm for the underdog up in this bitch. <laughs> And we classify you, we get you guys, you men, we give you all a bad rap up in here. Because we classify y'all as predators. We do. But if you look at the dictionary, a predator is one who victimizes or destroys for personal gain. And if you've done an inventory, that just might fit. So I came up here and I preyed on people. I preyed on people and I come and I set the trap. <laughs> Y'all know what the trap is from. <laughs> and y'all mind every single time. <laughs> I go and hug this person, that person, that person. It's like, Lisa, sit your ass down. <laughs> Look. <clears throat> and that's why I come here because I, I literally am for like the addicts who are, are, are not acting as if, or they're not so principled up in here. What is it about us that we start to, we get clean and we, ju we start to judge people for where they're at? No, for real. If you ain't acting, all of a sudden, like, if you're, look, I'm just as, I'm no better than the person that got one or two days. And when people come up here and they talk about it's not about using, it's always about using drugs. It's always about using. So I come back and listen, I haven't shared like in two years up until like a, until Donnell's sponsor asked me to go share about a month ago in the Bay Area. And this cat said, I, we, 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 I was at the meeting and this cat was like, man, Lisa, oh my God, thank you so much for sharing, blah, blah, blah. Man, it was so, you were so powerful. Man, you just touched me so deeply. You know, I heard you share back when I got clean. And um, I, I got my first day pass and I was in Stockton, California. And um, and I was I came across this church and I heard this, I saw all these people, right? And I thought, man, they ain't, these ain't church going people because they smoking, <laughs> drinking coffee, they're all talking shit, cussing. And he said, I heard this like distinct laugh, right? <laughs> And he followed the laugh, and he caught the tail end of my sharing. I was at the podium, and the, and uh, and somebody later on that day gifted him that that CD. And uh, he said, "Man, and I still have that CD today, and that was 12 years ago." Wow. <clears throat> and I thought, "Oh my God, how deep that was." That sometimes I, you know, this still I still gotta keep coming back regardless of. And 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 when people say you got mad, if when when. Three minutes. Please. Uh, when people come here with that are new and they're so passionate about recovery, I just like there's something about them. Like I mean, I'm envious. I'm, I'm envious. I'm envious about their um about that their flame. You know, they're, they're, they, they, they're fleeing through this program. I'm gonna shut it down. Um, you know, I got three minutes, I gotta like think. Okay, um, I love this program. Um, I got married in this program. I've been in one relationship for nine years. I understand that, you know what? When we come up here and I was hoeing and I was doing all kinds of crazy shit up in Narcotics Anonymous, that you know what, even though I was publicly humiliated, that my I understand that my restoration had to be public too. People need to see me go through that. So when you're going through something, sometimes it's hard to come up here and to share like what's going on in the here and now. Like we don't want to talk about like our, our, our sneaky shit, our lies. You know, when people say, oh Lisa, how, is, how you doing? I'm good. Oh Lisa, how, how you doing? I'm good. Like, no, oh, Lisa, how you doing? Oh, I'm good. No, I'm good. Nothing's wrong. Life is great. That's a shit's a bold faced lie. Like, shit ain't always that good. Come on now. Shit ain't always that good. But I keep coming back regardless of. I still got a day clean. Maybe I don't act all principled. Maybe sometimes I dress on my outsides hoping my insides are going to catch up. 
Sometimes I do do that. <clears throat> I'm gonna share the story. I'm gonna shut it down. Um, I and I have a good life today. I do have a good life. Um, you know, I when I was new, I had this budget right of a hundred dollars, um, and I was going to this market. And I was I and, and I had my my two kids with me, and they. Um, we were throwing stuff in the basket, right? And they were like, and obviously I went over, I fucking went over and I got to the register and the lady, she starts ringing it up and it's like $95, $100, $120. And my son's like, mom, you know, he knows my budget, right? And he's like, mom, and I was like, please be quiet. And my daughter, she don't give a fuck. She's like, get it, get it, get it, get it, right? <laughs> she don't care. So it was like 120, 30, 140, 50. The final bill was like $208, right? So my son starts rummaging through. He's like, excuse me. And he starts rummaging through the bag and he picks up his soda. He's like, excuse me, miss. Can I return these sodas? I'm like, just the sodas in the bag. Oh my God. I'm telling the lady at the register, oh my God, I'm, I'm sorry. Da, 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 da. So, so we walk to the car and my son's like, mom, why didn't you let me return your sodas? I might like, return my soda. I said, Justin, those sodas were $5. The bill was $208. It don't make a difference. He said, mom, in voting, one vote makes a difference. <laughs> and I share that to say that we make the difference. Like maybe your call might make the difference. Like maybe your hug might make the difference. Like maybe this meeting might make the difference. Like we make the difference because sometimes our, our disease minimizes our service in Narcotics Anonymous. So if you are of service, if you can just reach out and th that selfless service that I commend you, that we make the difference. If you were to put a cost on a sack of hope, how much would that be? Or what about a bag of serenity? How much would that be? You couldn't put a price on it because it's priceless. I would rather be in a meeting of Narcotics Anonymous thinking about using than be using and be dreaming how to get clean. Thank you for letting me share. Yes.